My pre presentation tonight is on an introduction to this program, Need Image, and it um, was uh, prompted by the fact that I took some videos, uh, some stills at the visit we, we had at Princeton for Lisa Randall's talk on the Higgs boson. How many of you know what Higgs boson is? <laughs> I'll let Bill explain it in, in two sentences. <laughs> the question is, what gives particles that have mass a mass? And it was formulated by Mr. Higgs a while back that all the space is pervaded by a, a, a type of field which was called, in all modesty, the Higgs field. <laughs> and uh, certain particles interact with this field, and in that interaction it gives rise to what we experience as mass. Mass being the amount of matter. <coughs> Two sentences? That, that, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Uh, those things, like photons, which are particles of light, they do not interact with the Higgs field, and so they are massless. Two sentences. So anyhow, um, I, I took some stills, I took some videos, and I produced a uh, short presentation, and I put it on YouTube, and I was criticized. <laughs> But criticism has a positive aspect to it. So uh, Bill criticized it because of his eyes, and you, you know how much of a perfectionist Bill is, it wasn't uh, clear enough, it was uh, grainy, it was out of focus, and blah, blah, blah. Um, as it, was, it was under dark conditions. Well, uh, as you will see, the, the basis for this program was also prompted by a workshop that I went to uh, from a friend of Joanne's, Vicky, what's her last name? Oh, Vicky DeVico's um, um, Photoshop workshop at the library. Right. Once a month. She has a workshop at the Middletown Library once a month, um, and it's well attended. I'm, I mean, well attended. Any of you have attended the lab up in the Middletown uh, uh, Library? The computer lab holds maybe normally yeah. 10 people. Yeah. There's like 20, 25 people crowded into that little room. We had a room uh, last week. They kicked you out? <laughs> right. Um, but um, she runs the show, and uh, she had a presentation. And it wasn't her topic, but I, I raised the question about uh, you know, what to do to improve uh, poor image quality. And she suggested some programs. Now, I don't think one of the programs that she suggested was the one that I found, which was Neat Image. But it prompted me, nevertheless, to go on the Internet and do a, a quick search. And usually when I do a quick search, I tend to, to use the first program that I find, if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll go on to the next program. So the first program I think that I, I found that worked was this program called Need Image. And so uh, that's the, uh, the basis of the presentation. So um, what you're going to see is pictures that would be before and after. So let me show you what I mean by that very idea, before and after. Okay, now, how many of you see a difference? Let's be honest now. Now, very few of you see a difference, right? Bill sees a difference. <laughs> okay, so, you know, so if if we well this one doesn't have my my magnifying glass so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll I'll just go out and I'll um, let's see if we can zoom in from here I don't see the zoom on this one e either uh, there's a 59 percent where where's my yeah that's what I'm looking for thank you kindly okay <laughs> So we do 100, 150, okay. Now, we still, it's not as pronounced on this monitor. Let's do 250, 200. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you can see a little bit of, of the, uh, the issue here with the
not not even on not even on this screen. But believe me, these are different on a. Uh, I I don't know what the resolution is on this monitor, but on my my monitor, I have it at 1280 by whatever. <clears throat> you see a significant difference. Um, now you you normally are not going to have a problem, obviously, if you see if you see something that is smaller, if you take a picture that is larger and you make it smaller, you're, you're not going to see a difference. It's when you make it larger or when the picture itself goes through transformations. Obviously, the transformation will be what I'm getting at because, yeah, I took pictures with, with a camera and by the time it got to YouTube, it went through some transformations. So that's what this is all about. So neat image is for cameras and for scanners. If you're going to scan in an image, you're going to have the same issues. Uh, and what it is essentially is a noise reduction program. It's a standalone, which is what we have here tonight, although we don't have it now on this machine. We had it yes. on. Oh, we do. We do have it on this I, machine? I, I, oh, OK. We have it on this machine. And it's also a plug-in. It's a plug-in for Photoshop and perhaps some other uh, graphic software. also considered the image filter. Uh, so if you take pictures in low light, taking them indoors, you're taking them with no flash, it can act as if it were an image filter. So I don't know technically what you would call noise or um, graininess, but we know it when we see it. Now maybe some of you know what the definition is. I'm not into the definition. I'm not a technical photographer. I'm a, uh, you know, I, I'm an amateur photographer. That's my disclaimer, <laughs> again. <laughs> but I don't know what you would consider noise. I don't know what you would consider greening. But this software will handle that. Plus, the software will also handle pictures that are taken at high speed, action pictures, and children photography. Because there's going to be some blur. There's going to be some motion. Now, I, I don't have any experience with the latter. I have nothing to tell you about that. My experience is simply with the, uh, the low, it looks like you would say low resolution. Some people would just say it's a lousy picture, just low mm -hmm. resolution, which we didn't see when I, I showed you the first two, but so be it. So where is this going to end up? And that's key. Whenever you're, you're, you're taking pictures, uh, you don't always really think where it's going to end up, but most of the time when I take pictures, I tend to end them up on the Internet, and I tend to go with YouTube. So um, what are the requirements of YouTube? Let's take a look. And let me find the zoom on this. And I think John in the back was talking about something about uh, resolution or the size of Bill's pictures. Well, uh, in YouTube, we also have some requirements. There's things I'm just going to skip through here, but the most important thing, okay, these are different resolutions for video, <clears throat> but here's the thing that's important, that the resolution, and the term resolution, again, is a technical term that we battered around quite a bit, but it has various meanings, various interpretations, depending upon what you're talking about in terms of resolution. For video, all I'm saying now is that the 16 to 9 aspect ratio is what YouTube is going to take whatever you create. Now, whatever it starts with, it's going to go through some transformations, and it's going to wind up as a 16 by 9 ratio, aspect ratio. Do you all know what I mean by that? Anybody does not. Cass, you want to explain what, what 16? 16 would be width and 9 would be high. Okay, so just 16 pixels wide and 9 pixels high. Right, Cass? Yes. Wrong. No. <laughs> 16 pixels? Come on now. How many pixels? Give me, give me some ratios. Come on, come on, come on. Cass, how many ratios? 32 over 18. Come on. 16 to 9. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Who can give me a ratio that's up there that we normally see on our TVs? Go ahead. More than the ratio. Give me the actual those pixel oh, size. There, there we go. There, there we go. 720 by what? 1028. Okay. Is that 16 by 9? 
I believe that's four to three. Okay. So that's the other ratio. Yeah, that's the other ratio, four, four to three. So, so that, that was something that I, um, I know about. But again, I just had a camera, and I wasn't thinking about it, so I, that's what I had. But, uh, so again, if, if you're going to put it uh, into producer and producer alone, then you have to think about producer's requirements. Well, producer will automatically convert into what you need. Yes, and that's a problem. And anytime something does something automatically, it's always a problem. Now, the camera also is where I started with. Uh, this is a Canon FS100. It's a video camera. And video cameras, by and large, don't take very, very good stills. But it is capable of taking stills. And the, uh, the resolution, again, again, I'm not going to get into the technical argument about the resolution again here, other than to say this is pixel dimensions. This is not really true resolution in, in my book. 1152 by 864 was the highest resolution, but it was really pixel dimensions. What's that ratio? Divide 288 into that, come on, Cass. 288 into 288. Come on, come on, come on. It's a four to three. If, if you divide 288 into 1152, I just happen to know the answer. <laughs> it, yeah, it comes out to be a four by three. All right, so so I did not think about that. I wasn't thinking about that, but this camera does take 11 by uh, 52 by 864. That ratio is four to three. So so if I put anything on YouTube, um, I would get some sort of transformation right there and then. And typically you get bars on the side. Uh, yeah, you get bars or you get the picture stretched or you know, something happens automatically that's gonna do this transformation. So uh, that's why I say it's already an issue. But I was, wasn't honestly thinking about that when I took the pictures. What I was taking the pictures, when I was taking the pictures, the conditions were low light, it was at Princeton University in one of the lecture halls. Uh, the lighting is even, I'm, I, I, you know, the room is like... It was like candle light. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the ambiance of, uh, <laughs> of, of discovering the Higgs boson. So <laughs> it was low light, no flash, and often uh, you really don't want to use a flash. Uh, and because this camera does not have any settings on it for stills, I can't control, can't control the shutter speed, there's no ISO control, the output is a JPEG. In essence, everything is uncontrollable. And we've all been there, all have done that. And even if you have things controlled, you still have poor images. So this is what I was shooting with. So here are the steps in getting from here to there, and that is you have a camera, and what I'm using now to get it to YouTube is not directly to YouTube. Uh, this is not going to go raw up to YouTube because I'm just taking stills. So what I did in between is I used ProShow Producer. Okay, so we have an issue here. Yes, you have automatic transformations, but you have no control. But yes, you do have control if you take a peek at the quality and performance of ProShow Producer which probably only one that's done that is Bill. So if I click on the settings, we take a look at some of the requirements here and bump this up. Uh, we have all kinds of good information here, resizing manually, image quality, video quality resolution. Okay, so whatever what's happening here automatically. There, there are some controls. Uh, it's, it says in here, I'm gonna make this as large as I possibly can. It says in here, uh, the setting 
value of something like 2560 by 2560 should ensure the best possible visual quality without making your system process a lot of unnecessary data. Huh? <laughs> Who is taking 2560 by 2560? So my 1152 did not meet that requirement. So anything that I took, if I'm going to go full screen, it's going to go through some sort of manipulation, which I really didn't, I didn't change any of the settings, any of the default settings. But it's in there should and if you want to. Uh, you just, you know, you have to know if, if you really want quality, you have to get into the settings. Otherwise, most of us who are going to do the producer or take the automatic settings. Uh, what I have tended to, to do with the uh, video quality is make sure I bump that up to highest quality. And any kind of the resizing of stuff, I haven't touched. But any video quality, I'll bump that up. So uh, I advise you, if you don't know about ProShow Producer's settings, you do go into the settings and you explore those settings, and especially with video quality. Uh, Quality and also, I think I've also done audio quality. I'm, I'm more into the audio for for music, anything that I record. Um, I'm not using top-notch speakers, so again, it's just this camera and whatever is going to go up to YouTube has to go through this transformation. I just bump it up the best quality I can, but there's a lot of things I'm not concerned about. So, what is Neat Image going to do in this? Okay, let's take a look at the website here. Okay, according to its own website, it says that it is the best noise reduction for digital cameras and scanners. I don't know if it's the best one, but it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty good, pretty simple. It produces, it provides the most accurate noise reduction currently available. Neat image efficiency reduces noise of the following types. High ISO noise in digital camera shots. I don't know what that is. Bill, anybody? High ISO noise. High ISO noise. I guess when you take a, a, a shot at 6400 ISO in the dark, you're still going to get some, you know, uh, dots in it. So, so, so that's, that's, so that's, that's, that's uh, color noise. So that's, that's your high speed. High, higher the ISO, the faster... Yeah. Faster the film, but the, greater. but the greater. Okay, but the greater. Okay, so high ISO noise. Um, it also reduces film grain and scan film and prints. Uh, that I see when I scan something in. I call it dust and specks, and uh, Photoshop does a fairly good job on that. But if you overdo it, uh, you really ruin your picture. I mean, you you got to be careful. What I usually do if I use Photoshop is I mask everything uh, outside the face, because if I start re reducing specks and dust from the face, uh, the face gets really plastic look, and you know, you've, you've destroyed the face. So the face may have the pimples and blemishes and everything else, but the rest of the picture is all cleaned up. Can I just clarify? Sure, something? absolutely. The uh, difference between graininess and noise, graininess is like a George Surratt painting, point of this thing, right? Whereas noise would be introduction of various little colored dots that have nothing to do with mm. the picture that you've got. Yeah. They're just out of place. Okay. Um, also, neat image is good for JPEG artifacts and more. I'm not sure if they meant more or they meant more, but maybe they said and more. Neat Image is currently available as a standalone application for Windows, Mac, OS X, Linux. It's a plug-in for Photoshop, Windows, Mac, OS X. It's a plug-in for Aperture. And um, also, just recently, I just uh, saw that it is available for video. That's what their website says. Uh, yes. It says C also. See also neat image noise reduction for video based on neat image technology. I've been using a program called N, I think it's called N Reveal. It was presented to me by, introduced to me by Steve Miller. And we've used that uh, 
for cleaning up videos uh, that are jumpy and grainy. And now uh, Neat Image has a, a little app for that also. So that might be useful for any of you taking videos in low light. So is that a separate? Yes. It's yeah. It's called Neat Video, not Neat Image. It's Neat Video, yes. Okay. It's Neat Image for Neat Videos. Great, because it took us so long to get going. Uh, to the presses to about 10 minutes to show some examples of before and after. Coming, 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 coming. <laughs> okay. So, neat image in action. Uh, you first open an image. You take a sample <clears throat> of an area that is um, representing a problem area. You tweak it, and then you have an output. All right, this is what the screen looks like. Mm. Okay, this was a picture at uh, Princeton. And uh, the first thing I did was to open it up. You open it up, it's, it's a JPEG. You open it up into Neat Image. And then you have what's called a device noise profile. And there are some uh, profiles that are built in. There's some automatic tools. Not sure if I use them or not. Uh, sometimes I went to use them, and sometimes I just did it manually. But I found an area where I could draw a rectangle. And if the rectangle turns green, it says I have enough pixels, enough of a sample of the problem area to do something with. Oops. OK. Then when you choose those. Um, that area, you then have controls that controls the degree you want to sample and the amount of noise reduction you want to have occur. I tended to go with 100%. Um, I could have gone with anything from 0 to 100, or I could have uh, gone the other way. I've actually gone, gone negative. I could have not uh, than any noise reduction. So these controls are pretty much sliders you just play around with. But again, on this monitor, I don't see a difference. I don't know if you can see a difference on the screen. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take an image, a image on, on the disk, and I'll blow that up and see if we see anything on that. But the program is very, very simple. Again, you input a picture. You take a simple, uh, take a sample by drawing a rectangle, or you use one of the profiles. And then you tweak with the controls on the right, and, and the controls on the right usually are 100%. Now, there are different levels of noise. Uh, the high noise means you can really see uh, graininess. And the low noise, or low grain, you can barely see it. It's, it's very, very minor. So, Depending on the image and depending on the kind of, of uh, quality, you, you will decide which ones you want to work on. And in my case, I worked on all of them. I, I did the job on all three. The high uh, uh, amount of noise, the, the middle amount of noise, and the low amount of noise. So to improve the pictures, uh, we use this formula. We use NI, which stands for what? And what I didn't show you an example of, but there is a BP in this formula. Do you know what the BP stands for? <laughs> British <Sure>. Petroleum. <laughs> uh, Bill Perkinson did a, uh, a presentation on, on uh, printing uh, uh, large prints from small shots. And uh, what he did was he essentially resampled the, the image. Now, my, my images were pretty big, but if I did any cropping, they, they're then small. Pixel dimensions, again, were small. So what I did was I take them in the Photoshop, and then I would resample them. And, and I, I won't have time to show you tonight, but anytime you take an image that has a certain resolution in Photoshop, and then you copy, let's say, to another Photoshop document, and it shrinks down, <clears throat> Uh, it shrinks down because you're going from two different resolutions. Because if, if you go to another resolution, it might only be set up to present on the web, which is 70, 72 pixels per inch. 
So if I take a picture that has 300 DPI and I put it into Photoshop in 72 DPI, it's going to be one fourth the size approximately. So what I would do before I would do any any improvements, and I've done this with other uh, photos that I've taken, I would resample them per Bill Parkinson in Photoshop, and then I would do my manipulation from that point on. So I want to thank you, Bill. That's part of the format for improvements and picks too. So here are some examples. Um, now, in addition to just the um, the graininess and noise reduction using neat, neat image, and in neat image, there is a, a parameter to increase the brightness. I did increase the brightness. So here's a before, and here's an after. Oh. Oh, now that you can see. Yeah. But well, I'll say. even better, I have to, I'm going to take it out of the, let me see. Oh yeah, I can go, I think I can go to the, let me see if I can go to the original here. Oh, he's on his side, but let's ignore that. All right, you see? All right, you, you, let's rotate. Yeah. Where's the rotation here? Here we go. Yes? No? Uh, image. Rotate. Rotate to the... By 90 degrees. Well, there's some up top of the table. Rotate, right? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so you, all right, here you can obviously see the problem, right? Clearly, right? We all now we agree. Okay, this this one we can see. Okay, so the that's the before, and now the after. And image rotate right. Make it already. Okay, oh, that's at 200%. Wow. Okay. And uh, Bill looks, Bill's face looks the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah, looks the same. Bill at 200%. Maximize this. That, that's at 200%. Can, can you enlarge the iron? Uh, obviously, when you when you do any manipulation of a of a picture, what it's what it's somehow doing it in my understanding of the, this kind of uh, software, whatever the algorithm is, it's doing some kind of blur. So it's taking pixels that are similar and different hue, uh, different um, tonalities, and it in. It, it's going to it's going to blur. So there's a, there's a downside. So and and if you do too much of it, it's going to make it look very plastic. So here here is the two hundred percent. And let me see if I can get the other one side by side. Maybe that would be a better indication. Uh, let's see, that's Bill before. Let me sign find Bill after. Okay, what they do is they call the image afterwards, they call it filtered. So let me see where I have Bill here. Um, I think this is it here. Yep. So here is, let me bump this up 200%. Okay, so this is this is at a hundred percent, two hundred. You see, I think can't seem to be putting it side by side though. Okay. My dermatologist would be proud of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
There, there we go. There we go. That, that's the best I can do. Okay. So that's that's two hundred percent of Bill.